Welcome to our lecture, Bridging Open Work Permit. What is a Bridging Open Work Permit? Qualifying foreign nationals currently in Canada who meet program eligibility requirements may be considered for a work permit to bridge the gap between the expiry of their current work permit and the final decision on the application for permanent resident, APR. They must have submitted an application for permanent resident under one of the following classes the Federal Skilled Worker class, the Canadian Experience class, the Federal Skilled Trade class, the Caring for Children class or the Caring for People with High Medical Needs class, or the Provincial Nominee class for applicants for whom there are no employer restrictions on nominations. For certain employer-driven streams in the PNC, the nominating province or territory may impose employment restrictions on a successful nominee until the person becomes a permanent resident. If employment restrictions are imposed, Immigration Refugees and Citizenship Canada IRCC, will not issue an open world permit to the foreign national under the Bridging Open World Permit, Labor Market Impact Assessment, etc. Bridging Open World Permit Eligibility Parameters To be eligible for the Bridging Open World Permit, Foreign national must be currently in Canada, have a valid status on a work permit that is due to expire within the next four months, be the principal applicant on an APR under the Federal Skilled Worker, the Canadian Experience Class, or the Federal Skilled Trade Class, the Provincial Nominee Class, or one of the two caregiver classes have completed one of the following APR stages the electronic application for permanent residence EAPR submitted on the express entry has passed the R10 completeness checks or they have received a positive eligibility assessment on the paper APR submitted by mail under one of the economic class above have applied for an open work permit have paid the work permit processing fee and the open work permit holder fee and have provided as applicable evidence like a nomination certificate that the provincial nomination is unrestricted note foreign nationals in the provincial nominee program are eligible for the bringing open work permit only if they have provided a copy of the nomination letter issued by the nominating province or territory along with their application and there is no indication that employment restrictions exist as condition of the nomination. The following foreign nationals do not qualify for a bringing open world permit. Foreign nationals in Canada under Section 186 of the Immigration and Refugee Protection Regulations, IRPR, who are exempt from the work permit requirement. Foreign nationals who have left their status expire and must apply for restoration in order to return to temporary resident status, or foreign nationals whose work permits are valid for longer than four months and who have already have a new LMIA that can be used as the basis for the new work permit application. Foreign nationals applying for a bridging open work permit at the port of entry or visa office spouses and dependents of principal permanent resident applicants and foreign nationals who are inadmissible to Canada. When it comes to the issues of the bringing open work permit, applicants must submit an application to change condition, extend my stay or remain in Canada as a worker form, that's the IMM 5710, indicating that they are applying for an open work permit. Work permit applications are processed as per information provided by the foreign national. The response to what type of work permit are you applying for must be open work permit to meet the eligibility requirements. Officers will ensure the applicants meet the eligibility requirements regardless of whether the employer's name is mentioned. The processing office will confirm the following. The APR under one of the economic classes, as we said before, the Federal Skilled Worker Program, Canadian Experience Class, the Federal Skilled Pro Trade Program, Caregiver Classes, and the 
provincial nominee programs with no employment restrictions has passed the required permanent resident application stage. So those applications that are in those cate in either of those categories and have has passed already the required permanent resident stage will be able to be processed on the list where permit application. The foreign national is currently in Canada. The foreign national currently holds a valid work permit that will expire within the next four months and there are no other issues of concern. The work permit application is for an open work permit as per the details of intended work in Canada section. The open work permit holder fee has been paid in addition to the processing fee and the applicant is not inadmissible to Canada. Subsequent requests uh, from applicants to extend their stay on an open work permit will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. If a medical examination has not been previously conducted or its resort have expired, the office must impose the following conditions. No unauthorized to work in child care, primary or secondary school teaching or health services field occupations. No authorized to work in agricultural occupations designated countries only. In all cases, the officer must input on the work permit the visible remark APR pending. This remark, in addition to the case type code, will ensure eligibility to continue health care coverage by the province or territory. So you will see in some cases that you might be marked as an APR pending so you can continue enjoying your health care coverage while you're waiting for the work permit of your permanent residence. Employment location. In case you are applying through a provincial nominee program, when issuing a, a bridging open work permit to an applicant for permanent residence under the provincial nominee program, the employment location of the work permit must be restricted to the nominating province. Therefore, the province of destination must be selected and then the city of destination value should be selected to show the province territory. You will see that the officer will use these parameters to evaluate open work permit for the bridging part under a provincial nominee program. It's going to be based on the location of the application. For the other programs like a federal skilled worker, the Canadian experience class, the federal skilled trade, such restrictions of employment locations are not necessary. For a spouse or common law partners and dependents, certain conditions are required to be met by the holder of the bridging work permit in order for his or her spouse to also be eligible for an open work permit. In all cases, the bridging work permit must be valid for longer than six months. For a spouse or federal skilled worker applicants, the bridging work permit holder must be performing work at a level that falls within the National Occupational Classification NOC skill 0, A or B. For the spouses of PMP applicants, the spouse is eligible for an open work permit for the duration of the work permit held by the principal PMP applicant, irrespective of the skill level of the principal PMP applicant's occupation. Okay? So, if it's going to be for the spouse of an applicant under the federal skilled worker, they have to be in an occupation that is on the level skill level 0, A or B. If it's for somebody, the spouse of the person that is applying under the PMP program, then there's no, there's no requirement about the skill level. So that's what basically what this is trying to tell us. For the spouses of the Federal Trade applicants, the bringing work permit holder must be performing work with being one of the qualifying occupations in the NOC skill level B. Okay, and uh, for the spouses of people that are applying under the Canadian Experience class, there are no separate conditions to be met by the principal CIC applicant. Okay, so dependent children of an applicant in any of these economic classes must obtain an LMIA or have an LMIA exemption based on the specific situation in order to apply for a work permit. Supporting documents. When you submit your application, you must provide all supporting documents listed in your document checklist. You must also include a copy of your acknowledgement of receipt letter. 
If you apply for permanent residence online through Express Entry, this letter is automatically sent to your account when you get your application. If you apply outside of Express Entry, this letter is sent by the processing office after they verify that your application is complete. If you apply under the Provincial Nominee Program, you must also include a copy of your nomination letter. If you apply for a work permit online, all of the above documents in a letter of explanation are slab in the document checklist. So, when you're applying online, you have a choice of letter of explanation. That is when you're going to upload one of these documents there. Note, if your permanent resident application is not complete, CIC will refuse you bridging open work permit application and they will not refund your processing fees. So be clear about it. You need to make sure you have all the documents ready before you send the application because once you pay those fees, they, you will not get any refund from the immigration office. Thank you very much.